Hi, my name is Dave Stagel. I'm front of house engineer and mixer. And right now I am the audio director at North Point Community Church just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Today I want to talk about C6. C6 is a multiband dynamics processor where a traditional compressor affects our entire signal. Multiband processor will divide it up into multiple frequency bands so that we can affect each of those individually. Well, in live sound, we're working in a dynamic environment. We've got singers who float around their microphones, guitar players dance on their pedals all night and swap guitars out, keyboard players like to change patches in the middle of songs. In a studio situation, we could go in and edit these kinds of things and automate them to control them, but in a live situation, we have to handle that on the fly. And C6 is a very powerful tool for managing the tonal balance of our inputs and our mix. So now I'm gonna look at some of the specific controls on the C6, but if you really wanna understand exactly what everything on this plugin does, I would highly suggest that you check out their manual online. Now, if you're familiar at all with the C4 plugin, these controls immediately should look very familiar because we've got the same controls as the C4 with the ability to use two floating parametric bands. So first up, here are our controls for each band. And if you're familiar at all with a traditional compressor, a lot of these are gonna seem very familiar. We've got our threshold and attack and release controls. Now one of the things that's different on C6 is this range control. And what range does is controls the maximum amount of processing we're gonna do. This is great in live sound because we can limit how much processing we're gonna do. Um, I usually like to put it somewhere between neg 5 and neg 10. Um, right now I've got it set at about neg 8, which is a, a good healthy amount of processing. In addition, we've got solo controls and bypass controls for each band so that we can solo up and listen to each band individually. It's important to understand that these are destructive solos, so you wouldn't want to use this in the middle of a live performance unless you're trying to go for an effect. Sometimes this can be very useful for getting like a telephone effect or something really highly filtered. You can always solo a band up. And then there are also bypass controls so we can bypass processing on each band. Right here we have the crossover control so we can control how wide our bands are gonna be. And there's also a Q control which will adjust the slope of those bands. Another powerful feature of the C6 is the sidechain ability. Here I have a C6 as an example inserted on a bass guitar and I take, like to take the sidechain and set it to my kick drum. So then I can take this bottom floating band, I set the sidechain to external and I'll find the fundamental of my kick drum and center that band on there. And what this will allow me to do is when my kick drum hits, it will take out that fundamental from the bass guitar so that just that fundamental of the kick drum will come through from the kick drum. First, here is the bass and the kick without the side chain. <laughs> Let's see what happens when I engage the side chain. So what this does is it, it basically is cleaning out a hole for that kick drum punch in my subs to really punch through. One of the most challenging areas for me in mixing live sound is in managing the upper mid-range of the frequency spectrum. This is a critical area of the frequency spectrum because our ears are really sensitive in this area, especially as we start turning volume up. The first thing I like to do is to get all my bands sorted out. And the, the one that is most important to me, as I mentioned, is this upper mid frequency, which is band four. And basically what I like to do is I want to focus that in on what I consider to be all of the hurt frequencies. There is one God, one glory, one
The second area I like to, to get worked out is really the low band, which is where proximity effect comes into play. And on just about every microphone, every vocal microphone I work with, I just pretty much scoot it all the way up to 250. And one of the, the things that I found working with any of the Waves multiband processors, C4 or C6, is that when I can get two bands in the ballpark, where they're doing what I want, those other bands fall into place on top of it, which really can speed up uh, applying this to a mix. So now that I've got my frequency bands in place, what I want to start doing is I want to actually start applying this. And what I'll typically do is I'll get my vocal dialed in with EQ to where I like it, and I'm only going to start applying things as I hear things that bug me. So what I want to look at now is another way of using C6 on the same vocal, but instead of using these center four bands, I'm going to use the floating parametrics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the low band to try and clean up some of the mud. A lot of that's probably coming from proximity effect on the microphone. And then I'm going to use this upper one just to work on the harshness. So let me solo up what I'm actually going to, going to go at. So here is the upper band. So I can really hear on, on like God and Redeemer, there are some high notes in there that are really going to kind of, kind of bite through and be a little painful. Uh, let me go to the low band. So here's what I'm going to go after on the low band then. There is one God, one glory, one redeemer, one great story, our rescuer. So that's just kind of a muddy area. So let me play it with both of these engaged now. There is one God, one glory, one redeemer, one great story. Now something else I'm hearing on this is... Uh, and we could do a little DSing on it. So if one of the benefits of using the floating bands for this is now I can take this high band and use it just for DSing. So let's kind of find the S's. Rescue has come, a great for ice has been paid. So that's a little more under control. One of the great features on all the Waves plugins is the ability to A-B your processing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the vocal back into context now. And I have this setting using the floating parametric bands, but I'll also go back to a setting that was closer to what we were doing earlier. So I'll start, start with the floating parametric bands and just toggle it back and forth. So there are just a couple of ways you can use C6 on a vocal. One of the challenges in a house of worship environment like mine is I've got programming content that has a dynamic range of 20 to 30 dB. I've got spoken word, you know, that's at a conversation level and then live music that's at the lower end of concert level sound. So something I like to use is max volume and what max volume helps me do is it helps me even out the dynamic levels of my mix that sound great in the room so that they can translate to places like our hallways, our video control room where people need to monitor the sound that's happening in the room outside of the room. 
One of the initial things that drew me to the Waves plugins was definitely the audio quality. They just sounded really good. But as I dug in further, something I started realizing was just how much easier they were to work with than some of the other processors that are out there. And in a house of worship environment like mine, where we have a lot of volunteers who are mixing, having something that's easy to operate is huge. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. If you want to read more about how I'm using some Waves plugins, you can visit my blog at goingto11.com. And as always, all the Waves plugins are available for a demo at waves.com. So go check them out.